Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast, the best place to learn all about how successful, happy people found work doing what they love. Thanks for listening. And so welcome to this episode of Peace and Possibilities, everyone. Thanks for joining. I am here with Suska. Suska, tell me how to say your name perfectly. Uh, you did say it absolutely perfectly, Suska. Suska. And I met Suska um, actually at a conference <laughs> um, a couple of years ago. I think this May will be two years ago I met you. And oh, I, God. Stopped, I know. I stopped at, um, I was at a conference. I was on my way to the conference and I stopped in the Starbucks to get something to drink. And you were sitting down and I sat next to you and we started chatting. And right. I remember meeting you and thinking I wanted to get to know you. I, I thought you were so interesting. I thought you were exciting. I just, your energy was great. And I'm, I just started, we just started talking and we've kept in touch ever since. And um, I wanted to learn more about um, what you're doing with your art and your book and your podcast. And I want to help people understand how you became so fabulous. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a nice introduction. You know, I just realized, first of all, yes, we met at Starbucks. That's where I did all my writing. Um, I wrote my entire book in Starbucks on my little iPad and um, in the book Wonders in Dementia Land. But I also realized in talking to you that, God, I have you to thank for the podcast. Hmm. I think when we were sitting there talking about my book and I was telling you they're going to make it a movie and it's getting exciting. Um, you asked me about, you were telling me about your sister who did an audio book. Mm -hmm. And you asked me, do you, can you do an audio book on yours? And I said, well, no, it's so expensive. I asked, um, I was checking around and someone to speak it, to put it in audio would charge about $4,000. Well, that wasn't happening. And I think you gave me the name with somebody else. I love this story. I tell people, you gave me this. I think you told me about somebody in India or some book in another country who could read the book at a much cheaper price. And that stuck with me. And I love telling that story because I keep on thinking of my mother with this foreign accent and it cracks me up because she's in the book. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, I started trying to do it myself and it didn't work out. And I went, wait, 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 wait. Let's make this a podcast, a storyline podcast. So my podcast is in these short episodes, which is great because I, I think it's hard to sit and listen to a whole book unless you're actually traveling across country. Mm -hmm. So I did these short podcasts that are only about you know, 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes in a series. And I'm now on 18, um, podcast number 18. Matter of fact, I just finished it last night and put it up. Mm -hmm. And so it's a Dementia Land podcast. And, um, like I said, I just finished episode 18. But I have you to thank for that because I would have never, ever done a podcast. I would have just mm -hmm. continued. So thank you. You're welcome. You never know. Um, this is why I love meeting new people and talking to people because you just never know what's oh. going to stick with someone. Um, and that right. my sister just, actually that week I was there in San Diego, my sister just, uh, her book just came out. And she was actually the night... Um, I had to travel to San Diego for the conference. She was doing a book signing at this local bookstore and I couldn't be there. And I was so disappointed because I wanted to support her. Um, all that was happening and she figured out how to do publish a book and do everything on her own. And that's right. When I met you, I said, wait a minute. No, she, she hired someone for just a couple hundred dollars. Like it's not just <laughs> one way or the highway. Right. Um, and I'm so glad I know. Oh them. my God. Yeah. You think I absolutely, yeah. All of a sudden it just dawned on me. That's you inspired me. Oh, but awesome. um, And I kind of love the podcast now because it's also so much more a part of me of who I am. It combines not only the storytelling, which I'm getting to like, and the actual book, which I adore, um, but I'm also adding my own images, my version of what it looked like, which is totally bizarre. <laughs> so oh. it's a little different. So it combines both of them together. Kind of interesting. Awesome. So, yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. And it sounds like you're, I can hear the excitement when you talk about it. So it's, it's cool that it just it took another, took another art form. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So tell yeah. me about, so I know you're an artist. I know you're a writer. Um, I don't know about how you got 
to that place in your life where you always were. Um, when you were growing up and did you see yourself as this independent woman who would be an artist and be able to write a book and accomplish what you've accomplished or did it just kind of evolve from something else? I, you know what? I have no idea how to even, I, I'm always this way. I, maybe being a middle child Gemini has something to do with it, but I've been always kind of independent. I've always wanted to just experience and do a lot of different things. I just wanted, there just wasn't enough. You know, I just wanted to see more and I wanted to, I wanted to see the other side of everything. And, and so I've always been kind of curious. So I, I guess I've always been an artist. Going to school, the two things that absolutely fascinated me, of course, was um, um, being an artist, any, any form of visual, and math. So those are the two things that carried me through school that I absolutely adored. Everything else I was bad at, but I just, I adored it. And I, I guess that's how I just knew that that was my direction. That's how I see things. Um, yeah. All right. So did you always... So are you, have you always, I know you wrote a book. Um, tell the name of the book mm -hmm. again. Um, Wonders in Dementia Land. Okay. It's available it's, on Amazon. Awesome. And um, typical of, well, not typical, but I, I took care of my mom who had dementia. And I was absolutely fascinated by it. I just, I, I, I found the experience incredible. I decided when I was taking care of her and I walked in, that I was going to drop my own memory and go into her world. And it was so, it, it was the greatest thing I ever did. I mean, I got to be, I got to really see something different and, and I got to see a different side of dementia. I didn't expect her to be, I didn't label her as my mother anymore. I didn't expect her to do certain things or, and at the same time I dropped kind of like my rebelliousness and my middle childness. And here we were both, like almost meeting each other for the first time. I found it rather fascinating. So I started to write about it and it ended up in being the book. Wow. That was, that's, it, that's so cool that too, that you thought that you had the insight to know that like you, you probably wouldn't have been half as um, accepting of everything that was happening if you were trying to resist it. And just to go in with that attitude, just, I mean, what a beautiful way to do it. And then a beautiful way to write about it and say like, you can experience it from her point of view and perspective instead of going in there and saying, thinking about what you're losing, you know? Yeah. It's, it's you know, you kind of create your own world and you kind of create your own situation all the time. I've always believed this. So when I walked in that house and I certainly didn't want to be there, I was living in Chicago at the time. I just recently purchased this big warehouse that had an art gallery in it and, Oh, it, what, it, it, I was living what I wanted to do and worked so hard for. And then my mother gets dementia and I had to leave it all and go take care of her. Mm. So I, I, I'm standing outside and it was freezing cold. Oh, California was great. And I'm freezing cold in Chicago and I'm opening the door and just made that decision that, you know, okay, come on. I have a choice here. <laughs> Am I going to actually make this miserable? Or am I going to go ahead and just keep yourself open and just see what happens? And uh, that's what I did. And you, I kind of always been that way, where mm. you just have to make that choice. We can, yeah, we just have to make, wherever we are, yes. you still have the choice to uh, what direction you're going to take it and what you're going to bring to the plate. Also, because when I walked in there and throughout the entire time that I was there, if I had that kind of an attitude, it changed everything, uh, which is definitely what the book and the podcast is about. Um, so it, it created this whole different kind of time period when I was with her. It was interesting. Oh, I loved it's it. such a great lesson. Um, number one, I'm glad you got to experience it in a different way with your mom instead of in, in pain. I'm sure it wasn't uh -huh. perfect, but that, and then obviously um, being able to tell her story um, through a different lens and then just sharing with other people that whether you're a teenager in high school or someone who like me is um, kind of in her third act of, you know, what do I want to be, you know, kind of for the rest of my life and how do I want to contribute and use my strengths and all of that. It always comes back to 
choices that you make and your attitude right. and your perspective, right? And if you have the, mm -hmm. the bad attitude, you're probably not going to get what you want. You're not going to be um, seeing things from a good light and you bring, draw more of that energy to you. It's, it sounds simple, but it really is a common theme when I'm talking to people about, yeah, um, not that everything needs to it be really, It really is just dropping. And it's, and it's sometimes, I don't know whether the word is attitude because a lot of people say, well, I have a very good attitude. It's not just even an attitude. It's dropping everything. If anything I learned in dementia, once you drop all your baggage, once you, you know, all those memories have a weight to them. Some positive, some not so positive. They're all in there. And once you drop all of that, you really are standing there. Who you, you're standing in your own person. You're, you're, you have no more baggage. You're free. I got to see my mom totally different. It's not like we were, we were great friends. But after, with the dementia, I found out, my God, she was a funny person. I had no idea my mother was funny. Mm -hmm. She was really, I saw all these little things and I went, oh my God, that's kind of cool. And yeah. she wasn't, they're not, they're, you know, we put on all this armor. And I tell you, the biggest surprise, so if anything, was me dropping my armor. I, I not being dead that kind of rebellious thing. I didn't realize how much I carried it. And of mm -hmm. course, when I left, my mom died. And when I left and came back home, I had to put all the armor back on because you, mm -hmm. it's hard to live every day. But I, I know that feel and I know what it feels like to take it off. And that's kind of good. And I try and take it off as much as I can and just be. Mm -hmm. I do take it off when I start writing and when I paint. Mm. I, I got Which is probably why you like it so much. Exactly. I'm doing something I love, and when you're doing something you love, you do you do drop everything. So oh, I when I walk that. away, it starts all over. But it's um it's a battle. I think that's kind of like. Um, but it was very very. It was, I learned so much. I learned so much, but that dementia. Oh, hmm. such an interesting. Um... It's such an interesting concept, and I'm the fact that it sounds like you said you you've always been this way, but the fact that you were so clear about what you needed to do to be in that space, and then I think too the book probably wouldn't have been so. And not that it was easy, I'm sure to write because I'm I'm writing one too, and I know it's not easy. Um, but the fact that you had all of this this openness and this freedom and the clearing out all the baggage, like you said, you had you were um, all of that information and all those experiences were flowing to you and probably made it a lot easier for you to write right and reflect on it I would guess well part of that and part of life tries to make it easier on you <laughs> when I finally came home and, and after dementia and started getting things in order and whatever um, I got cancer and that mm -hmm. set me back quite a bit and I was really kind of like mad almost but because I had to sell everything, sell the warehouse, sell everything. And, and I, that's when I moved to San Diego. And um, so the full first year, um, all I did was sleep when I was here. And then I went, well, I can't lift a paint can, so I may as well write. I mean, I, when I was taking care of my mom, I took notes, but I had no idea it was going to be a book. Oh. And that's when I went, oh, okay, well, I may as well write. I can't do anything else. And it's like life tells you these things. No, 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 don't do that. I'm sorry. I, we want you to do this. And it just, it just moves you in certain directions. Mm -hmm. And you have to just take a deep breath and just go, okay, okay, I'll go. Yeah. I'll follow. Yeah. I'll just see, see what happens. And, it's, and, and so I don't know whether it's attitude as much as it's, um, it, it, you, just, you just drop things and just follow. Listen to your heart, I guess. Yeah. And I don't always listen to my heart. I think a lot. I just don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes life has to help me out a little bit. <laughs> yes. And um, direct me. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't even know you had cancer. So you're, wow. Yeah. So, and so this, all of this happened after you were sick and you, you got healthy and then started writing and. Yeah, well, it was a combination. I went through so much chemotherapy that I, uh, like I said, I, I really couldn't even figure out how to write a check 
to pay for anything, you know, the warehouse and stuff like that. So I sold it. And I remember telling the universe, okay, 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 okay. If the, if you want me to move here, if you if someone's going to have to come in and buy this warehouse and give me what I want. And that's exactly what happened. And I went, okay, I guess I'm moving. <laughs> so oh. I moved like here and I didn't sleep for the year. And really the choice was only the right because I, I couldn't paint. I had no energy. So I made a routine of every morning at seven o'clock, I'd go to Starbucks and I'd sit and it was at the best Starbucks ever. You remember that, how cool mm -hmm. it was living in the corner. And mm -hmm. so it had a combination of not only convention people, but homeless people. So it was a nice, it was perfect. So I wrote the entire book. I would stay there and write from like 7 a.m. to noon. Sometimes I would write one sentence. Sometimes I would write so much, like I, I didn't even realize it was coming out of me. And then I'd come home and go to sleep. Okay. And I kept that routine going until I went, oh, my God, this is, this is kind of cool. So I think with all that happening, you kind of drop your guards and you just let it be and you find out what comes out. Mm, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So um, what advice? So I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, the, the, the people that are listening to this could be anyone. Um, probably from an early 20 something to a 70 something year old man or a woman. Um, and they're, they're trying to figure out, you know, how can I use my strengths? How can I be in this job and, and get a little bit, you know, go towards my dream, but I, I can't quit my job yet. Or how can I be this artist or writer that I see myself being if I have these bills to pay or, you know, what advice would you have for people that are, no matter what age they are wanting to do something different or, going for something like you said you were going you bought this warehouse you were going to put art in this warehouse i'm guessing and then that that it didn't get yeah. out and now it you're... was it was my studio and my gallery and it was perfect i bought a a unfurbished or a raw warehouse and i built it into what i wanted it to be and it gave me a lot of space to paint and do everything so yeah when you just kind of kind of when you're moved in different directions you just got to follow them. But by the same token, you also have to take chances. You know, I was absolutely, I guess, now that I come to think about it, I'm not as free as maybe I assume I am because it took cancer and maybe the dementia to move me out of the warehouse and say, no, if you stayed in that warehouse, you'd be doing a certain kind of painting. You need to get out of there. You need to get out. Mm. And the book, you need to write. I would have never written that. I mean, writing was the farthest thing from my mind. Okay. But I remember even some of the comments on my writing was, oh my God, your words are like a paintbrush. I mean, you're like painting in this. It's, it's, they're poetic. They're, yeah. And I, I, I had no idea that they're so closely related and, and that this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still, and by the way, we're always going to struggle about who's going to be paying the rent. I mean, this is, this is, we live in America. This is what it's like. Yeah. So you can use that. You can say that, in, but you can always squeeze in time. You can always, you can always squeeze it in. You can always mm -hmm. figure it out. Make a goal and just say, okay. Now, I'm not saying, you know, all goals are, we don't always hit them all so to speak. I haven't either, but boy, what I've gotten in some, I mean, it's taken me in other directions that I would have never gone if I didn't have that particular goal. Yeah. Yes, you know? you're right. So it's, yeah. um, that's, that's something. Go, Say, go towards something. Yeah. You, you always have, you always have a dream. Everybody has a dream. Mm -hmm. Everybody just has a dream and try and live it, live your dream before it even happens. Oh, I like that. Live your dream before it even happens. And it, you're yeah, much more likely just, to get, to get there. It's yeah. The, it's the process anyway. It's not, the, it's not the end result. The dream is actually a process. It's the whole thing to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can, I can see that too. Just, just um, building this business and the, the same way. It's like, it's it, every piece of it's exciting. Oh. It's not just getting there and, and picturing where you want to be. It's like, because once you're there, there's always going to be something else, especially if you're a creative person, 
um, like you. Yeah. And most and most of the um, people that I've been talking to, there's always some piece of creativity in there. Um, it might not look like an artist or a, a writer, but there's always some. You know, there's lots of ideas and there's things they want to go for, and there's always something else they want to strive to do. And I don't think that ever changes if you continue to, like you said, follow um, follow the process, live your dreams, listen as things are coming towards you and, and yeah. like some moving you and figure out where you're supposed to be next. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to have the whole thing planned out. Yeah. No. <laughs> and even if you do, it's never going to work out like that. Right. No, uh, it never is. Yeah. It never is. I, I look back at my life right now and Oh my God, not only this isn't, I had no idea I was going to be here. It's also scary, by the way, even my life now at this age, Holy Jesus, you know? And then I go, it's scary by the standards of an, of an outside world. But, it's, but like a, when you're creating and when you're so involved in your work, it isn't scary because you know exactly that's where you're supposed to be. You know when you're supposed to be someplace and doing something. Yeah. You're just, there's just no struggle. It just, it comes out of you. Your art, your creativity, your love for this or that for whatever you do yeah for teaching for baking for reading for whatever yeah that's yeah, when you, you know, disappear yeah. and you go yeah yeah they always say like uh when you're when you're younger and you're, you you talk to your career counselors you know what do you want to study in college or what do you want to do for a living kind of thing and it's like what's the thing that you lose time doing what's the thing you can look up and three hours have gone by and it feels like it's been 10 minutes and so those are the kinds oh my of things god that, yeah those are the kinds of things that That's you should it. be going towards. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, okay. So I have a, I have a final question for you. Um, okay. Are you, your, your journey is so interesting. Um, when you, so instead, I don't, uh, when I talk about regrets on this podcast, I'm not talking about what do you wish you would have changed? Because I really think, truly believe that everyone is exactly where they're supposed to be and they wouldn't have anything they have unless the life went and, and they moved like you were talking about the way they did. So um, if you, but do you, is there anything that you wish you had done a little sooner or learned a little earlier so that maybe you could have, I mean, obviously your mom getting sick, you couldn't have changed that and written the book um, had she not gotten sick at the age she did. But is there anything else that you wish you would have learned sooner looking back on your life? And, um, uh, probably just a little more patience, you know, because I do, Personally, it's like I have two voices inside of me. You know, one is the good voice <laughs> that tells me you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Just open up your eyes and look around. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and, and I guess that means just listen less to the outside clutter, I'm trying to keep it at a distance. But I, I, I agree with you. I, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Not what I intended. There's mm -hmm. no security, maybe. There's no this. There's no, but those are just kind of words. You can lose all that in a second. It's, so um, if you do your very, very best, our job is to be, my job is to be the best Susan there is. The mm -hmm. best. You know, I've been given, I have certain talents and gifts. Oh, God. I would hate to die and have those wasted. I think that's what haunts me all the time. Because, you know, you're so good at that. Just do your best at it. And so many times people will tell me too, well, just get it out, you know, make some money and get it out. Well, no. Even this podcast, the one I finished last night, it's a little late. But, oh, damn, it looks good. It just, it looks good. It mm -hmm. says something, you know. It's, I just want, I just have... I look at things different and I'd like to make, I'd like other people to maybe, maybe learn from it. Maybe look a little different. It, you can always learn from everybody else around. That's the whole point of us all being in a community mm -hmm. of life, you know, yes. to learn something from it. So I guess maybe just a little bit of patience and not listen to clutter. <laughs> but basically I don't have any regrets. Oh good. I love to hear that. I think that mm -hmm. not, not listening to clutter um, is so important mm -hmm. because it's not a, I mean, instead of giving, getting everyone's opinion or you, you're, you're determined to do something and you know it's right, it feels good to you and you're, everything's pointing you to that and then you ask someone their, their opinion, oh, you shouldn't do that. It's like, oh, no, 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 that's, they're going to steer you down the wrong path. You already knew it. Like, trust yourself. 
you know. Take- yeah, I, I, I kind of like listening. I'll always ask opinions, mm-hmm. but I, I weigh it myself. I'm my own judge of any opinions that come in. Some I can learn something from, some no. No, I, I've already been there, done that. No, I'm done with that one. So I kind of, I, I listen to them. Um, but you have to be so selective. And these days you have to be tremendously selective. It's like a lot of tension in the air. But. Yes, for sure. And I love what you said about having, I would love to close on this concept that near, um, every single person on this planet has certain talents and gifts completely different from any other person on the planet. Um, the mm-hmm. fact that you're even alive is like a one in million, billion, there's a statistic around it you know, the, the DNA <laughs> from your mom and your, all yeah. of that is so, it's mind blowing to think about how you came to be and exist um, in the universe, but every single person is so different. And even if you think there's someone else doing something similar, they don't have your perspective, they don't have your experiences, they don't have your exactly. background, whatever it is. And so um, I think if you can think of, um, like you said, not dying and not having something that you, a dream, a talent or a gift shared um, is such a tragedy and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, if we're not doubting ourselves and we're going towards the thing that, um, that lights us up and that's, um, that the universe is guiding us to. Right? And this is a perfect time, really, when you think about it. I know it sounds like a crazy time, but it's also a perfect time. We're here at this time to express this, to really, mm-hmm. we have a lot of advantages when you think of it right now with all, everything that's going on to be open, to look at ourselves. We have millions of people we can, we can listen to on the internet that inspire us. You know, there's you, you're up, you're starting a podcast. I mean, you're talking to different people. You're getting different points of view. I'm on the other side of the world, almost the other mm-hmm. side of the country. That's mm-hmm. kind of fascinating. Mm-hmm. For sure. Really? Yeah, just, it is. When you think about it, there's really no excuse to have, what you want. Everyone's just, I think people don't think out of the box enough. And it's like, Oh, I went to school. I have to have this job. I'm going to go to this office. It's like, Oh no, no, no. There's like, there's no, this point in time is so there's so much, there's so many ways to create and have what you want. It doesn't have to only be one way. Um, if you're oh, gonna yeah. Do it, yeah, now is the time. And, um, the earlier you do it at the end of the day, which is why I'm doing this podcast, the earlier you do it, the more people can experience your gifts, you know, yeah. earlier. You, yeah. you just have that much more time to share and create and um, the world would be a better place if everyone was doing more of that, in, in my opinion. So that's why I'm that's why I'm talking to people just like you. Well, you're doing a great job. This is oh, cool. I kind of like this. <laughs> thank you. I love it. I love it. So fun. Thank you so much for sharing your story and um, coming on and talking about your sharing your wisdom. Oh, you're quite say. welcome. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Well, people, say the name of the your podcast and the book again, and people want to find you. Where can they go? The podcast is called Dementia Land. That's one word. And the book is called Wonders in Dementia Land. And um, the, the book is available on Amazon. The podcast is, it's at podcast.com, YouTube, um, iTunes. It's kind of as many places as I can get it. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So go check it out. It's an um, interesting perspective and a fun, you have a, you have a great way of, like you said, you're, you're, you're painting and you're writing and it's just, it's just, it's just fascinating. You're such a cool lady and I'm so glad I got to meet you. <laughs> well, you. I'm obviously extremely glad I met you because I got a podcast, but uh, because of your kind of direction there, that worked out real well. Thanks for listening. If you love this content, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts or whichever platform you found us on. You can get all my social media links in the description below. Help us keep the momentum going so that every person can live.